All right, buddy. David, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. And you? I'm doing phenomenal. Really excited. So, obviously, we've been talking, and um, you had you watched a seminar, or I should say the overview that I had with um, our partners there, Mr. Mike Conroy. And, and what was your question? And the reason I'm recording this, and I know other people may have the same questions. Well, it, it was very interesting, that, especially, you know, obviously hearing it from him um, about the, uh, the the way that we thought, that we think about the after school program being a babysitting and all that stuff. And, you know, we get it that, you know, yes, we need to, you know, um, whoever needs it, they go and get it, right? Okay, but sometimes we have to go get them to get them, you know, educated and get them inside. Now, obviously, I'm one of those type of person that kind of think like, hey, if you're not coming in here, that means that you don't need me. But I need to actually, you know, start doing something because obviously, you know, we need to get more, more people into the door. All right, so David has a situation where, like many of us, he's been stuck in a, a paradigm. A paradigm really means that a specific way of doing things. But in the meantime, he has 20,000 square feet in his location. Maybe you can do a little walkthrough because uh, it would be pretty impressive. Um, one of the things we're going to do at David's location also is going to be promote um, one of the Wilmer tournaments to launch off Region 12 because he happens to be in Massachusetts. But can you go into that room and show those rings what, what, I'm, going, what I'm giving a little overview here? So the, yep. mi- the mindset of this, when people come and take lessons, that's a luxury. When it comes to what would be after school, that's a necessity. As you can see, this is a beautiful location. That's only three rings there, but with quite a bit of space with mats and so on and so forth. And then on the other side, those mats can be lifted up and we can actually put spectator seating right there um, to have an event with three rings for continuous contact the day before the actual tournament, we can have the continuous contact tournament. Now, you also have the same amount of space that's not laid out as of yet um, on the other side. So, for argument's sake, you can really have two two rooms with three rings. That So, you can really do six rings of continuous contact and spectators if you put the match on the other side. Yep. Um, we, we pretty much, we can actually do it the other side more because obviously it's empty. Like, um, we're going to take all these mats and put everything in that side and, and just leave this area as a, you know, um, you know, for practice and all that stuff. On. But, but on that, we have options. We have some options that most places just don't have. So we can leverage that place, obviously, for, for, for an event. But to answer your question, uh, uh, just to get on to the specific fact, after school care is a necessity. Parents must put their kids somewhere. Now... And it's not inexpensive. Now, yes, you do have systems in the school where they can go to after care for free. They got, you know, YMCA that does it for a small fee. But it does not include anything but leave me alone and go play over there, you know. Where when we teach yeah. martial arts, it's a little <laughs> different structure. And the mindset that is daycare is probably not the right mindset. The truth is that each martial arts student is worth, I should say, each after school student is worth anywhere between two and three times more than one of your regular students. So if you had yep. just 10 after school students and they're paying a very, 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 very underpriced conservative $300 a month divided by four weeks, then you're looking at an additional $3,000 just under what would be the tuition. But these kids are students, so they buy merchandise and so on and so forth. And, and as opposed to, again, a parent. So this is what happens a lot of times. The parents have the kids in an after-school activity, and then they try to bring them to your school after they did the after-school. They might have to pay for the after-school and then pay for you. Now, even though they might have wanted it, they, they can't afford it. They can't afford it. Now, when you have a school yeah. closed because it's, it's, it's you know, Labor Day or what have you day, long weekends. Usually the karate schools suffer too because the parents had to have the kids go somewhere else to take care of them while they went to work. And when they did that, they weren't able to come to your class. Well, the people who have after school normally means that they create a summer camp. And then the summer camp and after school people all of a sudden take their bad summer, make it to a great summer. And on top of that, 
those days that are normally slow because a of um, of a holiday becomes a a a, a, a one day camp they, where they might have paid yeah. thirty forty fifty dollars that day divided by you know, multiplied by the amount of students plus it also guarantees that that class for you that day that normally would be slow is not slow any longer because you already you probably made more money that day than than on other days you know that alone. And the parents are very happy because there's a difference between um, after school and what would be daycare or a nanny or um, you know babysitting. When the schools are closed and they normally have the after school there, that means that that person can't even take them there because the school's closed. So they may have to take yeah. them to work yeah. with them or maybe hire someone, and if you hire someone for even a, a measly five dollars an hour, which is, I mean, maybe illegal. I don't even know. Times ten hours <laughs> or what have you. You're looking at fifty dollars because they're going to work from nine to five, so that means that you got to be there already by seven, and then give them probably about an hour to pick them up to about six. So yeah, it might be a long day for you, but you can actually hire people for it. It was worth. But or if you have children, that means you have a place not for your children to be able to hang out too with some other people. So it's a lot of benefits to it. Again, not that you guys at Woma have to do this, but we have had people who I consulted that literally make more money with their additional program of after school summer camp and, and day camps. And now because of that, they've taken their karate and changed it and they teach exactly what they want. A little more hardcore, a little more selective because they have the cash flow that they want, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, obviously, with, <laughs> man, if cash flow would be a problem, you know, it would be so much different. Obviously, you know, it's, it's less worries on your head and more concentration into your students and more focus into um, you know, into what your lesson is going to be the day or the whole week or the month, you know, and um, preparing them for what's what's the next. Because obviously, you know, we we fail, we we feel sorry, yeah. <laughs> we feel that um, when we are training, we are black belts, yes. Um, but then, you know, the lack of how to manage your your business, uh, obviously, how to start your karate school, is is not even taught. At the level of black belt, you just thought, yeah, yeah, right. Know, so you learn the art part of it, but you don't learn the business part. So you become a black belt in the art, and then you're a white belt in the business, and then eventually, if you, you try to transfer other experiences for business into martial arts, and it doesn't always transfer exactly the way it should be. And I don't want to be too long yeah. on this particular conversation because I know you have things to do, and so do I. But but when it comes down to it, we also made a discovery today that your website is something that we're going to have to make a shift on. Correct. The yes, budget sir. that you're using on the website could be used slightly different, you know, maybe a portion oh. of that to host it and the other portion of it to actually generate new clients coming in through Facebook. Facebook is a very tricky, tricky place. If you don't know what to do, it'll take all your money, but it's where the eyeballs are. So how would you like within the next, um, within the next week or so that, you know, 10, 20,000 people within, the, within 10 mile radius of your school actually saw your advertisement? You know, that's that's a lot of eyeballs. And you can do that for as cheap as $5 a day, you know, $10 a day. Yeah, and all you need is a student to join every once in a while, once or twice a week, for you to really justify that. So that's coming really soon. We'll be educating you guys on that. I'm the expert in some areas, but I'll bring in other people, too, that maybe know better than me. So stay tuned. Hey, question. How, how are you feeling about what's happening right now with Wuma? Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Can't wait to just start doing this stuff, man. Uh, I would like to travel and and compete again, because it's been it's been you know not very well around. You know, just like you compete for just pleasing people instead of just you know the challenge because you are excited about it. Right. You know. Right. Uh, Okay. It changes. It changes the game. Perfect. So on that note, that means that it'll motivate you to lead by example. That's what we're supposed to do. Exactly. Plus, anyway, yeah. guys. You know, um, David, I appreciate your time. And again, all I can promise you all guys is we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure we help your guys get more students because then by definition, we'll have more competitors. All right. 
We out of here. When I say A.B., you know what to say. A.B., see ya. We out of here. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.